Hello and welcome to the Join Dota League Season 2. This will be a European Division 1 slash 2 best of 3 between Cleve, also known as Aware Gaming, and House of Gamers. I'm Greta Svi and I'm going to be joined today by Bane Shi. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. As in, it should have been a really good game as in seeing who makes it into that Division 1 and Division 2. Both these two teams working very hard to get this point. Dyer's pick. Yeah, definitely a very important game for both of these teams to Radiance upgrade bit. into the next division or if you're stuck into the uh, division two. So to start things off, the bands from Cleave are going to be an ancient apparition Batrider taken out by them and House of Ganymer is going to take out the Lycan as well as the Marana. And first pick invoker by Cleave. Yeah, as in obviously it's first pick invoker. We haven't seen that quite as often recently since invoker did get a small nerf for that EMP. There's been a lot of other heroes have kind of taken that first pick position. But at the same time, if you've got a good invoker player, it's still worth picking it up. Yeah, definitely. House of Gamers are going to respond with the Shadow Demon Dazzle. A very defensive supporting duo, but early on, uh, you can't underestimate the damage that they can pump out with the uh, disruption into the... Uh, weave, I believe. It just does so much physical damage. In fact, as far as level 1 spells are concerned, it's probably one of the most damaging nukes, so... Yeah, as well, although the Marana was... To go. I do apologize that. As, as well as the Marana, Marana was banned out by the Shadow Demon. It, oh, banned out by House of Gamers. It is worth noting that Shadow Demon, he does combo with a lot of Reserve heroes. Stuff like Scent. Basically anything with a hard hit stun that does a lot of damage. Yeah, definitely. Also, with the Shadow Demon and Dazzle, it's going to be very hard to take down the heroes of House of Gamers with Defensive Disruption, Shallow Graves, the heals coming out. Their heroes are going to be deceptively tanky, even if you wouldn't think of them as such previously. Yeah, as in, it also worth, it is also worth noting right now, the House of Gamers side, I would be expecting them to go for more of an aggressive tri lane for what they've got right now. They've definitely got that potential to set up a kill combo, uh, give one of those uh, carries that can start spiraling out of control, uh, that early game farm. While well, meantime, on the side of Cleave, you do notice that this combo has kind of slowed down their picks. They've really got to be careful with what they pick, making sure that they've got a trial lane that's very, very strong against aggression. Yeah, also, um, something to note is House of Gamers yeah, need to be a little yeah. bit careful when using defensive disruptions. That could set up for a Sunstrike coming out from the Evoker, depending on how he plays. Uh, but we're going to have uh, Puck picked up by Cleave. I'm thinking this is going to be an offlane Puck for them. Well, that is definitely a possibility. Puck, very good in terms of those uh, team fights. Can also silence up those very important heroes like Dazzle and Shadow Demon, as now we get the second uh, wave of bans, and that scent does get banned out. One of the few heroes that just combo up very nice with that Shadow Demon, uh, still left up in the pool. Yep, another laning option for Cleave is to put that Invoker towards the safe lane to and put the Puck towards the mid, and then they'll still be needing an off to round out their core. Uh, but we'll just have to see how they're going to draft. Well, I Reserve probably that. would suggest that Puck is going to go in the offlane just because that Invoker, he does need those levels. He does need that ability to go, uh, you know, get it faster, uh, whether it's going to be Quaz or Exhort. He's going to be going for just get those up and be able to uh, quickly start having an impact on the game. Because, yes, he does well with farm, but farm isn't the main thing that Invoker needs. Yeah, he definitely needs those levels and scales a lot better. Uh, as you get up towards the uh, higher levels and doesn't really have a cap. A lot of heroes sort of peak off as far as leveling is concerned after 16, but Invoker, all of his spells get better as he gets up to level 25. So getting high level spells is very important for the Invoker. Now, in the meantime, we do see that the second ban is taking a little bit of time for House of Gamers right now. And it is worth noting that uh, theoretically, if we do see an aggressive crawling coming out from a House of Gamers, we could see an offlane Invoker as well from Cleave. Because Evoker does win a lot of the one versus one matchups, you generally put in that safe lane. Yeah, but it is a little harder to do that on the uh, Dire side. It would be a Dire offlane Invoker. But if he does get that 1v1 matchup that they'd be looking for, definitely an option for Cleave as well. In the meantime, we do see the Disruptor getting banned out. Just banning Damn out all that silence, all that uh, team fight ability that can kind of combo him with the puck. Because right now, as in if Evoker does go Quas Wex, they do have a lot of a team fight ability. That Doom does get removed. I'd say one of the few matchups that uh, in a offlane Invoker, the Doom solo would be one of the few that Invoker can't really shut down that much. Yeah, worst case scenario for the Doom, he just heads over to the jungle, picks up his farm there, picks up a Midas, and before you know it, the Doom is going to be sitting at the top of the net worth chart. And later on, the Doom is very good against the Invoker and very annoying to deal with. So, definitely worth the ban. Yeah, as 
It is also worth noting that Doom, as soon as he hits level 6, Damn Invoker can't really do anything against him. Because that Doom just shuts down Invoker so hard, so a very nice ban out from Cleave. In the meantime, the last ban from House of Gamers is going to be that tree and protector. Once again, more team fight getting Reserve removed. Time. They just don't want to go up against a huge team fighting uh, lineup from Cleave with that Invoker and Puck. If you just get a third nice uh, team fight orientated hero to uh, combo up with that, you could do a lot of damage and possibly even start going for some early pushes. Well, House of Gamers haven't really shown any of their core, and they're going to start out with a Tidehunter here. Tidehunter, a very good offlaner. He's very hard to shut down, very tanky in the early stages. Also, he can always fall back on the Ancient should he need to pick up some farm there. And also, a huge team fight ultimate, and Invoker and Puck probably not going to be picking up an early BKB, but Cleaver going to respond with a Rubik uh, pretty much instantly. A very good support against the Tidehunter. Stealing Ravage can turn fights very quickly, so... I will say I do like that Tide to pick up a lot from House of Gamers because you've got to remember that his Kraken Shell, it removes all debuffs. That includes the silence from Puck, any stuns that might be coming out from uh, the other heroes. And go. it does mean that Tide Hunter is basically guaranteed to get that team by ultimate Five, off six. unless, you know, Cleave do their uh, stuns perfectly. And it also means that uh, if Cleave do want to continue time. this team fight orientated lineup, Tide Hunter does counter that to some extent. Yeah, definitely gives House of Gamers some team fight to fall back on for themselves. Still, House of Gamers really haven't shown how they're going to lane this at all, uh, whether they're going aggressive or defensive, and really the flavor of their lineup still yet to be seen, and they're going to go for a Phantom Assassin. How do you feel about Phantom Assassin this patch, especially without a Wisp? Well, Phantom Assassin, we have been seeing him picked up, uh, surprisingly, in the mid position. He's a very nice, surprisingly early game hero. He's got a lot of attack speed jumping in with that Phantom Strike, and his crits can do huge amounts of damage if that RNG Jesus comes into play. Yeah, definitely. I think it'll be okay. Usually when you have a Phantom Assassin, you want to have somebody else to buff him up, uh, like maybe a Magnus or a Wisp to give the extra attack speed or cleave, as it were. Uh, but that even as a standalone hero, Phantom Assassin, if you're able to get off to an early start, start snowballing off of some kills, maybe build a phase drums Reserve and just start uh, roaming around the map and helping your team fight, I like that a lot better than... Backing off for a Battle Fury and just farming up. Yeah, as in, you do have to remember that the Coupe de Grace, it does do a lot of damage early on. As in, you just need to hit that level 6 and get a little bit of luck. And, well, with the attack speed you do get, it does, uh, you are, it's not quite guaranteed, but you, the odds are in your favor. Yeah, definitely. Let's see where Cleave is going to go from here. They probably need another support and potentially something to put towards their safe lane. Yeah, as in, you... We need either another carry, more than likely, and a support. And at this point, Rubik, he is a very nice support in terms of he's got a stun and a little bit of nuke. But at the same time, I'd like to see another strong support Damn to you know, try to and go. counter the Shadow Demon Dazzle combo. And possibly even Phantom Assassin. As Enigma gets picked up, Radiant even more team fight coming out. Yeah, a fairly greedy way of laning this as well. So depending on what the fifth pickup for Cleave is, we're probably looking at an aggressive tri lane coming out from House of Gamers. I don't know, Phantom Assassin is fairly lackluster in the tri lane, but as you said, she could be going towards the mid lane anyway. Ten seconds so to go. It'll be interesting to see how both of these teams round out their lineups and whether or not that Enigma is going to get active around the map early. Yeah, as in obviously the Enigma, it does, like you said, reduce that tri lane ability on Cleave right now as we do see the next bands coming out. Dyer's the Gyrocopter getting removed. A little bit surprising, man, considering that they don't really have anything to set you up early with. I guess it is more a team fight damage and a carry, but at the same time, I wouldn't really be seeing Cleave picking up a gyrocopter in their lineup. I could. Well, even Damn at the early stages cool. of the game, it's easy to underestimate the damage that comes out of the Rocket Barrage, and with just a Rubik that Telekinesis, you still have killing potential in that lane. And then later in the mid game transition, with the Enigma Invoker Puck, that's a lot of team fight. Pick at Cleve's disposal. So I can understand it, but Gyrocopter, he's really fallen out of grace over the last couple of patches. Now the OD does also get banned out, one of the few heroes which gives Invoker a really bad matchup as Dyer's we pick. do see Loon again picked up, so that's definitely going to be a Phantom Assassin on that uh, mid lane. Luna going carry, possibly aggressive trial lane. Luna's not the best aggressive trial lane carry, but at the same time they are going to be going up against a weak uh, trial lane regardless of what happens. Yeah, also, uh, later on in the game, the siege potential coming out from a Shadow Demon Luna is very strong at just putting some pressure on the high ground, and without Train Protector in this game, any chip damage is pretty much permanent. Ten seconds to so, go. I don't know. I'm quite liking House of Gamers' lineup. It seems fairly well-rounded. Uh, the laning stage might be a little bit difficult for them, but if they're able to get over that, they should be fine. 
and we see a pick of a Weaver as well, and that's probably going to be a carry Weaver. I'd say actually rather interesting right there, as it does to some extent give that Weaver survivability, meaning that Shadow Demon Dazzle combo can't come in and just take him out. Yep, also, HOG really lack a lot of lockdown for that Weaver. Pretty much all they have is the Tidehunter Ultimate, so we'll just have to see how it works out for them in this game. I'll go ahead and introduce the Radiant team. It will be House of Gamers. We'll have D-Rocketman playing on the Shadow Demon, Mango Banana on the Tidehunter. Dazzle will be taken up by Key, Phantom Assassin by Malum, which will leave Megalib Game Train on the Luna. In the meantime, we do have on the opposite side, we've got Cleave. They were previously known as Aware Gaming, now they're known as Cleave, and they're going to be known as a Roger on the Rubik. Spelled weirdly. Sonic on Enigma. Lolic on the Invoker. Seema the Slayer on Weaver. And Zako on the Puck. And I will also say to people in game, I do apologize to those of you who didn't hear me in game, because it turns out I, I had my settings slightly too high. And well, we might have a little bit of action at level one. Puck was rotating out in towards his jungle, and we'll be able to back time. off without any interruption. There was a large rotation from HOG to secure a little bit of control over the dire jungle. They haven't warded up any camp so far, uh, but it looks like Shadow Demon is going to delay Enigma's farm a little bit by blocking that medium camp. He is being pinged out by the Invoker. They should know where that ward is, but no, not the easiest ward to deward. Now, I will say right now that uh, Puck showing us off right there is going to be a little bit of pain for Cleave, because we saw right now Here that Cleave, they tried to go aggressive trolling to try and dodge the uh, trialing versus trialing setup, and well, the fact that they saw the puck up there means that they know exactly where their opponents are going to be laning. Hopes for this one. Yep, definitely. Well, not sure exactly why the decision of Cleave was to go aggressive, but they are just going to rotate up towards the top lane with the Weaver and Rubik, wasting a little bit of time and you know, just going to have a little bit of a delayed start, and they're leaving the Enigma, well, not quite sure where they're heading out, fairly slow to get to their lanes. The mid matchup is going to be Phantom Assassin versus the Invoker. I'd say Invoker is favored a little bit in this lane, but both of them should be able to farm. Yeah, that blur is going to come into very handy against this uh, Invoker, especially with that to miss chances, meaning there's so much damage not being done to uh, this mid. It's one of the reasons why he has to start to become picked up as that mid hero. Oh, we do see Pucker slowly rotated down through to the bottom lane. He is going to have to be a little bit careful, though as already the harassment has started. Yeah, not really all that much. Just a poison touch and one auto attack coming out from Key. I think Puck should be fine in this lane. As long as he keeps his illusory orb to be able to escape, he should uh, be able to at least get his experience. Yeah, this Puck should be able to do fine, though again, more damage being done. He's going to be forced to orb away, and it's worth noting, Puck, he doesn't have a lot of health, and there's a lot of nuke and a lot of burst damage coming out from this uh, House of Gamers tri lane. Yeah, definitely. Tidehunter in the offlane is interrupting the dire side pull, and not a whole lot that Rubik can really do to this. With one point in the Kraken Shell and three into the Anchor Smash, Mango Banana should be completely fine doing this, and we'll be able to pull the creeps back behind his tower to secure himself some extra experience, and Tidehunter's already managed to find his level three. Yeah, that rotation that to Puck showing himself has really hurt Cleave in terms of the fact that that rotation just took so long. I think they both lost a entire a wave of creeps right there, and, you know, Every little helps at this point in the game. Yeah, but we are going to have a little bit of a pause here. It looks like Luna has disconnected from the game. Yeah, that early laning rotation really did hurt Cleave. Their Weaver's not off to a great start, at least early. And, well, there's really not a lot that they can do about this Tide Hunter, at least to get him out of the lane. He's going to have the time of his life here and might even be able to manage to find an early mechanism or blink, uh, whatever decision he goes for. Yeah, as in... It is going to be a little bit interesting which one they're going to go for. Personally, I'd like to see a fast mech coming out on this uh, Cleave lineup. They've already got the initiation in terms of a fast blink on Puck and uh, the Invoker and Weaver. They've got lots of ways to initiate a fight, but not a lot of sustainability without that to mech and the Enigma. Yeah, definitely. I think on the Tide Hunter, however, I think HOG need the Blink Dagger on Mango Banana to help them start fights because outside of Ravage, they really don't have a lot to control the pace of fights. So if he's not going to be able to get into a good position, the fights in the mid-game could be very difficult for HOD to deal with. It is worth noting, though, as well, that uh, HOG, they're not exactly the team that's going to be looking to initiate right, the fights. If we have a quick look at Cleave, as, I mean, if we have a quick look at House of Gamers, 
They've got a Phantom Assassin and a Luna. They have the late game. There's very few heroes that can out-carry both of those, especially the Luna. As in a farm, Luna is possibly the most scary thing in Dota. While on Cleave, yes, uh, Invoker and Weaver can do work, but they're more of mid-game carries. It's also worth noting the House of Gamers side, they've got that de defensive disruption and the defensive uh, Shallow Grave, meaning that they're the ones that's going to be waiting for the initiation to try and counter. Yeah, well, it looks like we have a little bit of a rotation coming up from the Enigma, possibly going to be sending some Eidolons to scout out the rune for the Invoker and well, maybe get a little harassed. They are going to duplicate in this mid lane. It looks like he wants to put some pressure. An interesting choice coming out from the Enigma. They will eventually time out, though. Yeah, as we do see that the rune is going to be spawned up on the... Bang, where was the rune? It looks like he did get denied by that Enigma. As right now, currently, we do see the Lunar is the highest farmer right now, and in fact, all the three uh, cores so far in House of Gamers are the highest, including this Tide is having a pretty good game himself. Yeah, definitely. On Cleave's side, they have managed to stack up their Ancients once, although they don't have the best heroes to really deal with that. Maybe with the uh, Double Forge Spirits Invoker, we'll be able to clean that up later. But I think HOG have the better Ancients team with the Luna as well as the Tide. Yes, I definitely would agree with that. That Luna, Heroic, Orican Workers. Puck is going to be a little bit careful right now. Key just doing so much harassment, forcing out that uh, phase shift. Yeah, but Ops. in the end, the Puck will be just fine in this lane. Is uh, struggling to get off to a good start, mostly because of that early game rotation. Is still only sitting at level 2 compared to the Tidehunter who's managed to find level 4 and well on his way to level 5. He's even pulling the creep camps, and that's... The thing is, they can't stop this Tide Dota. They just don't have any kill combination. Weaver's very defensive. Rubik got not really that much burst. And Enigma needs her, her items, or its items. Yeah, also, this is the advantage of the Radiant side offlane coming to fruition for the Tide Hunter. And, well, HOG off to a wonderful start in all of these lanes. Obviously, Cleave, they are going to be wary. As soon as Cleave starts hitting those level 6, Puck, well, he's actually nowhere near that uh, level 6 he needs. But as soon as, you know, the Invoker starts hitting his levels, the uh, Puck, and even the Rubik and Enigma, they are going to start ganking. And they, around about the 10-minute mark is when things are going to start getting a little bit scary for HOG. I think a lot of this game is going to rely on the Invoker being able to land those sun strikes instead of kills around the map. He's doing well in his lane, 18-1, compared to the 16-4 of the Phantom Assassin. And... Well, we do have a rotation coming out from the Dire Supports under the guise of Smoke, Enigma, as well as Rubik, looking for this initiation on Malum. They will have the lift. They're going to drop him straight down. Sunstrike is on the mark. Malum has been Malefist up, trying to get out, but no way. Lolik is going to draw first blood in this middle lane. Yeah, very nice gank they're coming out, and it's one of the few disadvantages of PA that, yes, they've got all that evasion, but at the same time, it doesn't really help if you've got a whole bunch of magic nuke. Yeah, definitely. Also, at fairly low levels... The duration, or rather, the cooldown on Blink Strike is fairly long and wasn't able to use that to get out of trouble. Up in top lane, however, Weaver taking a lot of damage from Mango Banana, just absolutely handling the Weaver in the absence of the supports, but I think that was good. But on bottom, Puck is falling to these supports. It looks like the disruption into the Weave combo was enough, just enough nuking damage to get the kill on the Puck. Yeah, that Soul Catcher, even at only level 1, it does a bonus 20% extra damage and throw in that uh, healing wave from the uh, Dazzle and the Aluescent Beam from uh, Luna, and, you know, that's a lot of nuke. That's a lot of burst damage. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Puck is an offlaner, really doesn't have a great way to get back into the game. Can't really rely very heavily on jungle farming, and, oh, well, he's pretty much going to be a non-factor at these early portions of this game. Not going to have an early level 6, not going to have an early blink dagger, and Puck is just going to be playing catch-up for the most of this uh, game. Yeah, Puck is going to be in so much uh, trouble. She really does need a blink, because we do see that PA is going in for a kill right now with Invoker. Invoker, though, looking for those crits. The Cold Snap is going to save his life. It looks like they may want to turn this. But he's oh. just going to get it, count his blessings and get out of there. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to turn that. PA actually got two crits almost in a row. It was crit normal tech crit. Very lucky, but uh, without a third one, no way she's getting the kill on the Invoker. No, but he is going to have to be a little bit careful right now. He is still very, very low. All it takes is, uh, you know, one or two stifling daggers, and Invoker's got no health. Yeah, pretty much. A fairly quiet game, other than those two kills. And up in top lane, we do have the sports rotating, and they get... Oh my goodness, Rubik just got completely exploded with the Soul Catcher into the weave from the Dazzle. 
<laughs> Too much that, damage. That is the power of a Dazzle plus Shadow Demon. I did say that although they're not looking to do the team fights, they definitely are looking for the ganks as, well, not only are they pretty defensive, they can be very aggressive heroes as well. Yeah, definitely. Luna has been left at the bottom lane pretty much uncontested because of the puck just not having a great start. And 45 and 21 CS on Maglev Gank Train with the Midas already online and might just look for an early Helm of the Dominator. Maglev Gank Train is looking to have a wonderful game, sitting leaps and bounds ahead of pretty much every other hero in the game as far as farm is concerned. Yeah, from a quick look at net worth, he's beating the Invoker by almost 1,000 gold and only 7 minutes of the game. That's pretty huge. As the Invoker has been having an okay game himself, but has been harassed a bit by that PA, has been kind of forced back. As yep. we do see more gank attempts coming out, well, the smoke being picked up by Rubik, they moment to gank middle again, but it's really Luna that I feel that should be trying to gank. As she's left alone, she's a very squishy hero, she can't really be uh, not babysat as PA is going to be a bit careful right now. Well, we do have a TP in coming from the Tidehunter. They might be able to turn this. They are going to have a Sunstrike on the mark and Black Hole committed. Tidehunter ultimate is being deployed and Phantom Assassin is actually surviving on the back lines. Now they might make a turn onto the Enigma, taking a decent amount of damage from Mango Banana, but a wonderful TP in from him is going to save the PA for now. She's coming back in and Weaver with the Gemini attack going to get that kill on the Cold Snap on Mango Banana was taken off by the Kraken Shell. Weaver's looking for Fidbolt from Low Ground. D-Rocket Man taking the Gemini attack. Nice time lapse coming out from Seema the Slayer and they're also going for more engagements. The Shell Grave will keep Key alive for now, trying to stay on the back lines of the fight is being healed up a little bit. Looks like he'll be able to make it out. See this Slayer taking a lot of damage from that anchor smash. Mango Banana. Oh, he's in a little bit of trouble here. Going to drop the stick charges and will be just fine. A very weird scrappy engagement in this middle lane. Not sure why the Phantom Assassin stayed around. She was kept alive for so long and looks like she just wanted another stifling dagger, but and she got just... a little bit too greedy there. Didn't expect Weaver to come in and the Weaver just surprised her. As in, without that Weaver, she'd have been perfectly fine and be able to get a little bit more, you know, ranged damage and help her team out. But at the same time, that is going to be a two for two trade right there. Also taking out that PA, but while all this happens, Luna continues to farm. Yep, 60 last hits at eight and a half minutes in Maglev Gank Train. Going to be working towards that Helm of Dominator and, well, once she picks up some of those ancient stacks, her farm is going to go straight through the roof. Entirely agreed as well. As in, she's not quite at the stage yet, but just a few more levels, just a few more uh, bits of damage, a few more items, and she's going to be in a perfect situation to start uh, spiraling out of control. Yeah, so back to the lanes. They've actually left Mango Banana in the mid for a little bit in the absence of the PA, and PA is now up at top. Mm, against the Weaver, she should be able to pick up a little bit more farm on PA. Not really having the best game. Has enough money for the phase boots, but not much more than that. Yeah, as in, it is worth noting right now, the main pain, so to say, on this uh, cleave side is the Puck, who's only just hit that level 6, literally just right now, and has, is in fact lower than the, practically every other hero in the game, only being beaten, only beating the enemy support. Which, yep. it's not a very good situation to be in if you're a Puck, because you want that fast blink, you want that fast initiation to be able to use that ultimate, and it's just not been happening for him in this off lane. He's just been shut down so hard. Yeah, pretty much the only support that is, uh, or has hit his level 6, is uh, the Enigma, who's been farming in the jungle, going to be working towards that mechanism, and we'll have it fairly quickly. He's smoking up again with the Invoker. Well, let's see if they're going to be able to make something happen, but it's not really an easy gank target. Key might get caught out in the middle lane, but that's not really who they want to be killing here. Are yeah, they going into it. the Roshan pit? Looks oh, like they, they are. Might. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be trying for a Roshan, which they could might make it happen as... Do they have any minus armor at all? Well, they do have the Forge Spirits doing some work, reducing his armor. Well, in fact, does that work on Roshan? It doesn't look it like does it, but... It does look like that they are possibly going to take this down anyway. Yeah, but very sneaky Roshan. Something that I wasn't really considering. Had Invoker gone for a medallion, maybe? I thought they'd go for the Rosh. Uh, but it looks like they're going to get uncontested HOG. Not expecting this either. No, and that's going to be very nice coming out for uh, Cleave right there. An advantage just when they needed it. Oh, Poker oh, going to be that up, getting himself a second life, and I'm guessing right now the HOG is going to be pretty surprised about that happening. Yeah, pretty much. Anchor Smash stolen by the Rubik, nothing too huge there. Uh, Rubik has managed to find his level 6 by soaking experience from the Roshan, and now these supports are looking pretty good on the side of Cleave. Everybody has their ultimates available, and Puck managed to find his level 7 on the bottom lane as well. 
Yeah, and this is where things are going to start getting a little bit interesting for a cleave right now. Is they need to start ganking. They need to start shutting down these huge carries. The uh, PAUs had an okay game so far, but mostly the Luna. The Luna who's just been spiraling ahead in terms of Golden. Just farming up the fast as she can. Yeah, well, up in top, Weaver just going to harass back the PA a little bit. In fact, taking a lot more damage than he bargained for with the Stifling Dagger. Weaver shouldn't die, however, has the time lapse. But still, just look how much that, uh, damage that dagger does with only 15 mana. It does 180 damage, and that's a lot of harassment coming out from it. You know, what many consider a late game carry, so to say. Actually, the uh, Stifling Dagger does half damage to heroes, but if it does crit, it does an absurd amount of damage, especially once you hit level 16. That's pure damage, mind you, so Weaver just really can't stand up to that. That was an even 90 damage for 15 points of mana. It's a very nice ratio there. Yeah, definitely. They're leaving Shadow Demon a little bit of space in the bottom lane, which also in turn is allowing the Puck to catch up a little bit as far as farm is concerned. Puck probably just saving straight for the Blink Dagger has 1800 gold, but by no means is this going to be a fast Blink Dagger. In the middle lane, we might have a little bit of action. Phantom Assassin does have support behind her, but well, it looks like they're just going to be hanging out and stacking up the Ancients a little bit more. Radiance top Probably top. just yeah. softening them up. Yeah, we do see this Invoker. He is, can play very aggressive with that Aegis. It's one of the few uh, rare annoyances of picking up a earlier Aegis is that there's not really a good time to use it, so to say. But being able to push down is going to be a very nice thing coming out from Cleave. Yeah, but also Tier 1 Tower in the top lane taking a lot of pressure uh, just from the summons, the Enigma Eidolons as well as the Weaver. And it will draw a reaction from HOG. They have the Ravage available. And we'll have to see. It looks like we're going to have a fairly large fight up in this top lane. Yeah, and it is worth noting right now that Puck just picked up his blink. The oh, issue coming out and... Going the way of the Enigma base, going to the black hole onto Tidehunter before he gets the Ravage off. It looks like he's going to fall without getting it off, and he will. Mechanism comes out from the Enigma. They're all so healthy. They get the Dazzle as well as the Shadow Demon. That's three down on the side of HOG. You know, a huge team fight win for Cleave. They tried to start that engagement with a disruption off onto the Enigma, but they just had no follow up. They need the time to ravage to make sure he didn't get the black hole off, but in the end, they got the black hole and they got three kills as well as a tier one tower going the way. And they're not going to stop here. Tier two tower going to be under some heavy pressure. And, well, it looks like Invoker is going to lose his Aegis in the middle lane. Not really going to be the biggest deal. Going to be sold up with that stifling dagger. Also purged up one crit from the PA, and that's an Aegis down with the four staff. He should be able to get out of this alive. It is on cooldown for a little bit longer. Well, let's see if Lolik's going to be able to get out a crit on the dagger. Just does so much damage. Soulcatcher's going to be a little bit late. One more crit from the PA. And it looks like he's going to die. He will. Shadow Demon gets the last hit um, with... Mm, I believe that was just Shadow Poison. But they get a pick off in the uh, middle lane. In the meantime, Tier 2 Tower falling very low. They lose the Tide Hunter as well as the Luna. I'm not sure how the Luna died, actually. She died behind the Tier 1 Tower in the middle lane. Might have been those uh, four spirits doing the damage. I'm not quite sure. I didn't catch that in the slightest. But the tier two tower does go down, and this is one of the few advantages of the cleave side. That as so if that dazzle isn't there to stop them, they've got a loss of pushability. Yep, and Weaver. He's picked up a Demon Edge, probably working towards that MKB, and I really like this item choice coming up from the Weaver. With such the, with the lack of lockdown that HOG have, he really doesn't need to build into a Lincoln Sphere or the BKB first and can just go straight damage, and this Weaver is going to be a force to be reckoned with very early. You're going for that Glass cam Cannon build, going to be able to do a lot of damage. Or picking up that Demon's Edge, probably not going to be a Divine Rapier this early. Oh, well, definitely That would be not. awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I think either Daedalus or probably MKB versus the Phantom Assassin. Now, obviously, for those who don't know, MKB does give you True Strike, meaning that all of that to blur does nothing. Yeah, pretty much. Weaver was gushed up in the middle lane, but we'll just be able to Shikuchi out of that. We have a wraparound coming out from uh, Cleave. They are under smoke, and, well, they don't have Black Hole for another 70 seconds, but they do have the Puck Dream Coil as well as the Blink Dagger available for them, and it looks like this is going to be a huge wraparound for them. Let's see how this initiation is going to go down. Can't do nothing about that. Blink is kind of waiting there. He might be out of position a bit as the smoke does wear off. Oh, they're going to lift back. Here comes the Ravage. It's going to land decently well. Puck is going to die. He's by his back immediately. Has the Blink Dagger available. Key falling very low, and then Dazzle will be cleaned up. Eclipse is being thrown out on the back lines. Nice Tornado will delay a lot of that damage. Now the Meteor, as well as the <clears throat> Dream Coil, has been dropped. Slayer is still alive throughout the whole of this engagement. Time lapse is a lot of that damage. He's going to be able to secure you back on the back lines. Now PA, the next target of choice for them, and it looks like they'll be able to blow him up with the Cold Staff. He's not moving anywhere. Four dead on the side of HOG, and that secures the Blink Dagger for the Enigma. And 
Well, with all of these summons, the Enigma Eidolons, as well as the Forge Spirits, they'll be able to go and take this Tier 2 tower as well. Weaver secures himself a double damage rune, uh, going to pop it immediately to refill the bottle that was handed to him. Yeah, we just saw right there that that team fight did kind of start off rather nicely. They caught out of position. Uh, even. They did take out that puck rather quickly. Having said that, though, after that, the cleave just spread out so nicely that all of the cleave damage coming out from House of Gamers just couldn't really do much against them. Yeah, definitely. Four step away from Moloch, he'll be able to make it back to safety. And this Luna, although she had a wonderful start, really isn't able to do much this game. They have a decent amount against um, BKB with the uh, Black Hole as well. It's just the raw damage coming up from the Weaver, and she just dies so quickly with only 800 HP. There's not really a lot that this Luna can do, and... Well, Cleaver pretty much completely controlling this map. Two tier two towers have already gone down in their favor, and what an explosive game coming up from Cleave. Radiant yeah, personally, I would prefer to see some kind of right BKB now. coming out from uh, the Luna this early on. As she's already got the money if she wanted to go for it after that uh, Morbid Mask. And that BKB would be huge in team fights, as most of the magic, on, uh, most of the damage on Cleave's side, apart from, from that Weaver, is magic, as we do see the smoke wrap around coming in. Yeah, it looks like they're going to catch out the Rubik here. Um, but nobody is really completely far out, and it looks like Enigma as well as Roger are just going to be able to back off behind their tower with all of the heroes missing on the side of HOG. And in fact, I think they saw that smoke with these aggressive wards going out in their jungle. So they should be completely fine. Yeah, they're going to be more than happy to be able to just sit back and force all this time wasted on the House of Gamers side. This the House of Gamers side, they've just rotated all five down, and at the moment, this top lane's pushing in, and all that experience is getting to waste. The middle lane. You know, they're not farming while they're doing this. Yeah, definitely. And while this is happening, you know, Puck is coming back into this game. He's, she's actually surpassed the tide right now. Those two offlane positions for the first time in the game. Um, we've got to, you know, Rubik and Enigma getting the farm he needs. We've got Invoker on the middle lane. And right now we're just seeing just how defensive the House of Gamers side is having to play. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I think as far as House of Gamers comeback potential, they just need to have a perfect Ravage in his team fights with the Eclipse on top, with the Tornado coming out from the Invoker. It pretty much delayed the Eclipse's effectiveness in that last team fight, and Maglev Gang Train really wasn't able to do all that much. Yeah, the Eclipse was, I say, done a little bit late, as in the Ravage was okay, but again, because that split up coming out from Cleave, that by the time she could get off a good ultimate, Everyone was basically already dead in the side. Yeah, and Lolik. Interesting item pick up for him. He's going for a straight Aghanim Scepter, and with the levels that he has, uh, level 13, pretty much maxed out Exhort Trouble as well. He's going to be able to use a lot of these um, spells in these team fights. Unfortunately for Cleave, the Roshan timer is pretty much maximum, I think, uh, except for a couple of seconds towards the end of that. So they won't be able to take that very quickly, and, well, maybe. Uh, HOG will be able to make a comeback probably around the Roshan. Or if they're able to win a team fight, maybe they'll be able to take the Roshan rather. Yeah, so obviously with that Luna and the Tide they've and that to dazzle with the Shallow Grave, they still have a lot of comeback potential. Yes, Cleaver ahead right now by roughly uh, 5k experience and uh, about 8k gold. But at the same time, House of Gamers are not out of it yet. They are behind and they're in a little bit of trouble, but this isn't still anyone's game to win. Yeah, well, Tidehunter does have the mechanism, so no Blink Dagger online for him just yet. Just Arcane's mech on Mango Banana. Uh, not sure if there's any other large item pickups. Luna has managed to find herself the Yasha and working towards that Mantis style with the ultimate orb on her person. Yeah, I don't know. The lack of BKB is probably going to hurt this Luna a decent amount, but even if she had it at this point, it's still very scary to be the Luna. Yeah, as in, I'd say that right now the Invoker does have a lot of physical damage that you can output, even without... Uh, that uh, BKB and there is still the black hole to contest that you know goes through magic community It doesn't matter what you've got that black hole is gonna stop you from doing it Yeah, definitely HOG looking for a pick off. Maybe maybe they'll be able to find out Roger here with no blink daggers They don't really have a way to seal the distance. They do get the loosen beam off We'll saw him up with the gush and it looks like Roger is going to die here drops the uh, tight under back and a blink in from the Enigma going to get black hole on too, but it's going to be cancelled by the Ravage They're still doing a lot of damage with the meteor coming out from the uh, Invoker on the back line. Zuna was able to make it out and well, it's looking like a good fight for HOG to start things off. EMP has been dropped. Malin's actually going to be able to TP out there. Maglev Gang Train is going to be cold snapped up. Uses the Manta to get out of that one. 
And now trying to turn on to Lolek. It's taking a lot of damage from this Weaver, however, and he will be able to uh, get dropped. Roger drops the Lucent Beam on him. They've lifted up the Tide Hunter back into the rest of the engagement. And Weaver looking for some more pickoffs. Going to start focusing on Mango Banana. He's hiding through the trees. And now going to try to TP out. He is going to be canceled by the Lucent Beam. And in the end, four for two exchange in the favor of Cleave, I believe. Yeah, that it starts that so nicely for a House of Gamers right there. They got in, they got those two kills. The initiation from Cleave was lackluster, but then Weaver just came in and they didn't really have any way to detect him or shut him down, and he just ran around doing a whole bunch of the damage with the Monkey King bar. As if I have a quick look at House of Gamers, they don't actually have any detection. Oh no, they do now. They've got some sentry boards, but. None of those are placed down. They had no way to detect that, that Weaver was there, and he just ran around, you know, doing what an undetected Weaver does. Whole bunch of the damage. Yep, and with that team fight win, Cleaver going to go back off into Roshan Pit, and this Roshan's going to fall fairly quickly, even without the minus armor, with the Monkey King bar on Sima as well as just the vast amount of summons. Roshan's just going to fall so quickly, and there it goes. They'll probably give this one to the Weaver, but last team fight, he didn't even have to use the time lapse, and now double damage rune. This is going to be very scary for the next engagement. 104 bonus damage for Sima whenever he wants to. And well, in the meantime, we are going to have Luna. She might get caught out here by the Weaver, and this could be huge. Double damage rune activated. Pretty much only needs a couple of auto attacks. One, two. Sunstrike is going to be on the mark, but split between those illusions. Weaver trying to chase down Maglev Gank Train here through the jungle. Should be able to get this kill with the Aegis. He can pretty much just dive this mechanism coming out from the Tide Hunter. And now time lapse to get the Weaver back out to safety. Unfortunately for the Weaver, he wasn't able to secure that kill. Had the Sunstrike done full damage, maybe they would have been able to get it, but oh, good play from the Tide Hunter using that mechanism, keeping the Luna alive. Yeah, the Luna. Just look how much damage he took right there. There's nothing they can really do against this Weaver if they can't detect him. And right now, they can't even focus him. He basically has three lives at the moment. He's got the Aegis. He's got that time lapse. He's even sold his bottle and he's going for a... He's got a Reaver. It looks like he's going for a heart, possibly. Yeah, and last engagement, they just had no damage for the Weaver. None of these heroes are hitting particularly hard. And Tier 2 Tower looks like it's just going to be sacked by HOG. No real way that they can engage into this without blowing Ravage. And if they fight outside of their base, they're pretty much just going to lose. So they're going to try for a little bit of split push coming out in the mid and top lane, but not really accomplishing much. In fact, Malum might be in a lot of trouble blink forward by the Invoker. Going to throw the Tornado, EMP, Defting Blast. Defting Blast was actually off the mark, but Malum trying to TP out here will be cancelled by a Lucent Beam. They should have plenty of damage. Lifts up Malum. He's missing a lot of those attacks with 50% evasion, trying to bottle up through Coltan has been landed and now blink forward loose and beam again from roger will secure the kill on the phantom assassin took a long time to kill the pa but in the end they were able to get that pick off yeah that blur coming into handy right there but not going to be enough and it is worth noting right now the invoker's got level four agonim's ultimate which means the fun times are starting everyone loves that two second cooldown it means you can do so much awesome stuff. Down in bottom, they're finding out Mega Banana Grave will keep him alive for a little bit longer, trying to TP out. I think he's going to make it, and he will for now. Let's see if he dies in the base. Sunstrike was attempted, but it won't get to kill on Mango Banana, so luckily for him, he was nice able to survive. Tier 2 Tower, tower has fallen down. in the bottom lane, and they're trying again for this Tier 1 Tower. Luna is up here. They're TPing back, Enigma's there, has the Blank Dagger, but was cancelled by the Bouncing Glaives. Won't be able to catch out the Luna. She's just running so fast with the Mantis style. We'll be able to TP back to base. I think she'll be able to make it, and sure enough, she will. But either way, this tower is going to get denied, and this is only going to be the second tower that's gone down for a cleave right now. This one in the middle dropping, and now finally the one on top, while there's no towers on the, on the low ground left for House of Gamers. They've got no map control at this moment. In fact, if we have a quick look at the wards that we see on House of Gamers' side, they've only got one here, kind of detecting here in the middle lane, and or on this bottom rune spot, and that's about it. That is not map control. They've got no idea where their opponents are, and we see that they're being forced to once again farm up as four and five, and even if they do that, Cleave has a lot of team fight to be able to counter that. Yeah, and Weaver's just taking all of their jungle farm. There's nothing they can do to punish this. With the Reaver, and as well as the Aegis, he's fairly tanky, and they just don't have lockdown to deal with this Weaver. And that's the problem right now. In, they've got, you know, a little... they got disruption but they don't really have that many stuns as in Weaver doesn't really mind being disrupted as it just allows the Sakuchi to come off cooldown and there's nothing else that really stops him from doing the damage. Yeah, he's going to have the heart of Tarask for the next engagement in the meantime Cleaver just going to group up and start pushing down this bottom lane and well we're just going to have to wait for the high ground push coming out from them. Well, let's see, Aegis still has a decent amount of duration about three minutes or so on the Weavers so they have plenty of time to coordinate this push. That's what you see right now, the Luna. She's got that Manta style. Looks like she's going for an Assault Karas next, which, again, I would prefer the BKB at this point, but 
maybe that mine plus armor is going to help against, and the minus armor against the Weaver. Yeah, definitely. I think she just needs as much survivability as she can, and casual plate mail is good effective HP for the money cost. As the sieging is going to get started, and right now, because they don't have a tree and protector, there's not very much that House of Gamers can do to stop the siege. Yeah, they're going to throw out the uh, Dazzle ultimate, but not really going to amount to much. Tier 3 tower looks like it's just going to fall without any big initiations. They will glyph it for now. Maybe they'll be able to get an eye, but it's going to fall one way or another. As Weaver will take it out, even more gold for him. He hasn't quite got that heart hit on his person, but it's now being carried to him by that courier. And, well, the cute little flying spider bringing lots of nice gifts for the uh, Weaver. Yeah, and once they have the heart, they can just chill up here on the high ground and go again. They haven't wasted any of their teamfight ultimates, and they still have the Aegis on the Weaver. There's really nothing stopping them. They'll summon the Forge Spirits, they actually used Alacrity on one of them to start doing a little bit of chip damage to the range barracks. It is worth noting right now that Weaver does need to use that Aegis, so to say, in the next uh, minute-ish. There's about 50 seconds left until it goes away. Yeah, well, in the meantime, just kind of waiting in anticipation for this next team fight. BKB is online for the PA, but even with the BKB, she's really not going to be able to do much. The crits aren't hurting all that much. She doesn't have level 16. She doesn't have any damage items on top of that. And Call Me Slayer, he's just going to hit this range barracks. There's nothing they can do to stop him. Has the time lapse if things get really hairy, but also has the Aegis that he just wants to throw away. So range barracks going to fall without any big engagement. Radiant bottom red. We have to just sat there. Looks like they are trying to time this exactly perfect. Try and take him out, but no, they won't. Barely misses it. I yeah, think they it. missed it off by about 30 seconds. As we see now, surely the initiation is going to have to come out by uh, House of Games at some point. Well, they might just end up giving this Rax away. The puck is actually falling very low, and will they get enough damage to blink forward on the PA? Trying to get this Enigma out of the fight, but he's just not following. Nice stifling dagger with the kill on the puck, but now the PA just needs to back off at this point. Where's the Weaver in this fight? Hasn't really been doing much, uh, trying to get those buildings. And, well, with the puck dead, Cleave might just decide to back off. Maybe range barracks is enough for them, but they could probably just commit to the uh, melee one as well. For it now, they're just going to back off. Yeah, it's worth noting right now that Weaver did use his uh, a time lapse, meaning he's a little bit uh, vulnerable. Sure, he's got that heart and a whole bunch of regen and, you know, the invis and all the other fun stuff you get from the survivability of Weaver. But at the same time, he, you know, he probably just wants to go back, farm up for a little bit, wait until that time lapse comes back out and, you know, then go again. Well, like standing in the trees, cancelling his auto attacks as best he can, trying not to get caught out here. He does have the blink as well as the boots travel, but now they have vision of him. He's going through a tornado out, and now the ghost rock, do they have detection? They do have a sentry. We'll be able to blink up towards the north, and now four step away, Lolik will be just fine. Very nice play there coming out from him, just so much survivability, especially when you've got that in, uh, you know, that Aegis Invoker. You can just throw out so many spells, do so much in terms of, uh, you know, controlling the entire enemy team. As he's a little bit early for this uh, Roshan, it's going to be up in at least a minute's time. Yep, Enigma just finished the black hole. Nothing's going to stop in this next engagement. And they didn't even need to use it to uh, secure the range barracks on bottom. HOG still have a fighting chance. They have the melee barracks still alive in the bottom lane. But I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Luna's still working towards that assault. Kuras has the recipe. Just needs another 1,700 gold to get the hyperstone. But Maglev Gank Train doesn't have buyback. If he dies, it's pretty much over. Yeah, so just with how much push that Cleave has, if they get a good team fight, they wipe everyone. You know, it's it is basically over. If we quickly look at who's got the buyback status, as in Weaver can also buy back. He's basically got three lives at this point, which means that even if he somehow goes down and they you know pop his uh, time lapse and they pop him with that heart being up, he can just come back and just racks down these towers. And with the amount of summons and the amount of damage that all these players are doing, these uh, racks are just going to melt. Yeah, I was actually mistaken. Luna did have the Hyperstone on the Courier, so that is available for this next fight, and a Blink Dagger on the Tidehunter. So maybe HOG are going to have the Dream Initiation here, and they're going to smoke up trying for this, but the Siege is going to start on the top lane. Weaver just plinking away at this tower, and... Oh, it's, they... Well, uh, not sure what they can really do about this. It's probably going to be a repeat of the bottom lane. Maglev Gang Train's fairly aggressively positioned here. And they might be able to get the jump on him. On the back lines, BKB PA trying to get the kill on Roger, and there's the crit to get that. There goes the Enigma... or. Excuse me, Tidehunter Ultimate, but the Black Hole is going to catch out three. Now the Defting 
Blast Meteor combo is being thrown out by the Invoker. Not doing a lot of damage now with the Shallow Grave onto Mango Vanilla. It looks like we'll be able to survive, but they haven't done any damage to this Weaver. Still has time left available. Probably going to be forced to use it, and he will. Maglev Gank Train is hitting decently hard. They did lose their puck in the Rubik in the back of that. Well, they're trying to catch out Malum here. Doesn't have the BKB. EMP is being dropped. Malphus from the Enigma, and they should be able to clean up this kill PA just way too far out of the base, and they will. Seems that the Slayer is going to be able to notch that one on his belt, and looks like they're just going to go back in. Oh. Yeah, that was sadly Get a load the tide under ultimate just wasn't good enough right there. As we see the, another initiation coming out, the Sunstrike not going to be enough against this Dazzling. Well, this Weaver's just, you know, using that heart regen and tanking the tower himself, forcing out that glyph without the creep even being there. Yeah, pretty much without the Tide Hunter ultimate, there's really no way that HOG can fight into this. They'll probably just take the tier three tower. They might back off, but now Blinken, nice tornado on to Ice Wall to fall. Not really going to land on much of anything, but Maglev Gang Train going to be in a little bit of trouble. Time loss was used by the Weaver to get back onto the back lines. Now they're in a full retreat. Mango Banana without the ultimate, you really can't contest this. They should be able to get the Enigma, and with a couple of crits, they sure as heck will. Lolik, with a very low level of Wex, the Ghost Walk is very slow, but he should be able to make it out, blink away, and, well, probably four staff and TP. What's up with these creeps? What? What? Uh... <laughs> that was the weirdest pathing thing I've ever seen, um... They all kind of just got stuck here and like... It, it kind of, it's kind of like all three of them just like clumped in a doorway and just like... Decided to chill there for the rest of the game. Well, they have been freed for now, so... A little bit extra push added to these lanes for Cleave. Yes. No, it was intentional. It wasn't a bug. It was intentional. A feature, in fact. Yeah, but well, the Roshan is going to be attempted by Cleave, and I don't see HOG trying to defend against this. Luna is getting very farmed and has managed, or, yeah, with the Assault Curious as well as the Helm of Dominator Manta style, and was able to survive through that last engagement. So, maybe there's still hope for uh, HOG. But Weaver's getting even more survivability right now, going for that, uh, well, probably going to be able to fly. Theoretically, threw up for a null blade, but I'm not quite sure why he would, or an e blade. But well, with the puck dagon, it wouldn't be the worst. It gives you good stats, I guess. But yeah, it's probably going to be the butterfly. And with the butterfly, there's very little that Luna is actually going to be able to do against this weaver. Last fight, she was able to do a decent amount of damage and force out the time lapse at least. But now, Aegis on the weaver, and let's see what they get the cheese to. No, oh, just uh, sitting on the ground. Maybe they'll have puck hang on to that. Oh, just kind of casually sitting there. Do they actually have a slot for it? As in they do, well, the Puck could pick it up. Enigma oh, will sell a soul ring and snag that one for himself. Whether he uses it uh, for his own use or whether he passes it to the Weaver in this fight to give him yet another life is still yet to be seen. Yeah, this Weaver just will not die no matter what he does. In fact, he's currently 7 0 and 7. Having a quick look at the stats, he's the only one who hasn't died in this game. Even the Invokers uh, got one death on him. Yeah, Malum was pushing out the top lane fairly aggressively. We'll just TP back to base and should be fine. Yeah, but the push is going to start coming out from Cleave, and now the Ancient Sack is going to be taken by Weaver. And with that, he'll probably has have his Butterfly. Uh, we'll send that to himself on the Courier. Or maybe he just wants to save for buyback and get back into this fight. I think just buying the Butterfly is fine in his position with the Aegis. Oh yeah, Assassin, he's got plenty of lives. He's got that Time Nats, he's got the Heart, he's got the Aegis of the Immortal. A Butterfly would basically make it even harder to get rid of those three lives. And I will say it's Dice definitely three lives because, again, something you notice, HOG don't really have any kind of lockdown. They can't stop him popping his time nats. They can't just stun him up and, you know, Dice remove him from the fight long enough to nuke hell. him down. He's basically got free range of whatever he wants to do. Looks like he's going to Shikuchi over to the side shop and finish up the butterfly there and then join the rest of his team to push into the top lane and try for that Rax. Bottom lane is pushing out for uh, Cleave as well, so a little bit of pressure on that side of the map. And well, looks like this is probably going to be one of the last pushes of the game coming out from Cleave. Yeah, as we just see right now, the Butterfly, it means that now even PA and Luna can't do that much damage to him. PA is going to have to get super RNG lucky to take him out. And At this point, I'm not even sure if they can kill the Weaver. Yeah, I mean, Malum's only critting for 700, and then with the Butterfly evasion on the Weaver, it just really doesn't mean all that much. As in, he needs to get several crits in a row and dodge all the butterfly uh, evasions. On the back lines, they're going to jump into Malum. He's just kind of standing there awkwardly. Will eat the uh, Dagon hit from the puck, and he's just kind of chilling there. He's being cold snapped up, and it looks like he did dis uh, DC. So unfortunately for them, well, Malum looks like he's going to die. Has a shallow grave for a little bit longer, but 
Yeah, Phantom Assassin, probably dead. Don't think he has buyback. A little bit unfortunate there coming out from House of Gamers, and he jumped in and then disconnect. <laughs> Always the worst time to disconnect. Kind of like a reverse Leroy Jenkins moment. Yeah, well, Tide Hunter, he does have the Weaver bug on him, so Blink Dagger's not going to be available. They also have Vision of Mango Banana, so I don't think he's going to really be able to get a good ultimate off, and they'll probably just focus him next. And Well, there is a possibility that Cleave will just simply uh, let him go, so to say. Yeah, I guess that's always an option for them as well. As in, there is the uh, possibility, as in a few, uh, obviously, as in, it's all up to them, and I'm not saying that either way is right or wrong. But a few teams, if they see an obvious mistake being caused by a disconnect, a few of them will just let it go. Yep, and well, obviously the, the PA that's just standing there was a pretty obvious issue. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Luna has picked herself up a Ghost Scepter, a very defensive pickup, just trying to stay alive as best she can. Uh, but it looks like we're ready to go. Yeah, as we're just seeing a, a few moments to make sure that PA isn't going to disconnect again. And not quite sure what their pings are right now, but either way, Cleaver in a hugely dominating position right now. They, we are starting to get into that late game stage. Luna, like what you said, is starting to get into that to carry position, but we've just seen that right now she can't really go for any more damage items. She's got a Ghost Scepter, which doesn't... I guess it works against the Weaver, but they've got a Puck Dagon and a Rubik and a... Enigma. They've got a lot of magic damage to go with that uh, physical damage. Well, Malum will be able to blink strike up to the high ground and make it out alive, at least for this fight. So maybe a little bit of banners coming out from Cleave or just good play coming out from HOG. Either way, it uh, looks like they're just going to back off for now. And But at the same time, it's only a minor uh, setback, so to say, for Cleavers. Cleave, they can just keep pushing in there, even if they don't want to commit. They can just use all of these uh, familiars they've got to... Uh, harass down these racks and there's nothing they can do about it. DKB coming out from the Enigma, wasn't able to blink in, was cancelled, not sure by what, and well, Malphus goes the way of the Luna, and well, the Weaver is just going to take this range racks with pretty much no huge initiations. Weaver has the Aegis and just going to start right-clicking away towards the Shadow Demon. They will be able to burst him down once with the vast amount of damage coming out from Key, so at least they get that kill on the back lines. The Eclipse is going out, but now the Black Hole going to catch out too. They have the follow-up damage. I think they do. Miss, er, Dream Cool has been dropped. Maglev Gank Train still standing there, trying his best to right-click. He will be able to get the puck as well as the Invoker. Buyback from the Luna was able to find that. Roger actually does have the Eclipse. Not sure whose Eclipse that actually was. Uh, possibly was the Rubik's, but in the end, Luna's alive. Weaver might uh, right. exercise a little bit more caution, but they got the range barracks in the end anyway. So, Yeah, as in, at the end of the day, the uh, Weaver, he's still up, he's still got that heart, he's still got survivability, and he got a, they got a pretty big kill there on the Phantom Assassin and forced that Luna, the one chance of them carrying this, to buy back and waste all that gold. Yep, Weaver is going to be weaved up by the uh, Dazzle. Did throw one auto attack towards the melee barracks, but will be healed up before too long. And with that, Cleaver just going to back off, wait for the puck and the invoker. And well, there's no real pressure on them to end this game anytime soon. Even if the Luna finishes all of her item slots, uh, gets up a satanic butterfly of her own, I'm not sure it's really going to matter all that much. And Well, the issue you have right now on the House of Gamers side is that even if, even if they manage to uh, you know, get Haluna farmed up and everyone else gets the items and PA starts doing stuff. At this point, a map control starts to carry itself. Because we just see right now that all it was all it's gonna take is one moment, one slip up, and you know, House of Game is pushing out too far and Weaver or any of these heroes just starts split pushing at the sides and takes down some more racks and at this point House of Games just can't leave their lane. Or can't leave their base. Not really, and Rubik has managed to find himself an Agam Scepter. Not sure what ultimates you're really going to be upgrading with this. Maybe if he steals the Dazzle Weave. Um, or maybe the Luna Ultimate, I think. Um, well, but either way. Lu the I Luna think is uh, upgradable by the Agadims along with uh, the, the uh, Dazzle Weave. Yeah, and the Shadow Demon Ultimate as well. You get two purges, but still, I think it's more about the positioning and stats for the Rubik. He's going to be decently tanky, and we'll be able to sit back and chain steal uh, spells with the reduced cooldown of Aghanims. There's also that, that, you know, not only do you get the Aghanims buff, so to say, from, uh, you know, using your opponent's ultimates, you also get an ultimate buff of your own. Reduce the cooldown all the way down to five seconds. In fact, theoretically, if you can get enough stuns off, you can, like, steal the same spell more than once and reuse it. 
Yeah, well, the push is going to come from Cleave again. They have all of their heroes up and available. Don't think they have any new item pickups. Well, actually, they do have a Chrysalis on the Weaver. So, just more damage going his way. And with Alacrity on the Forge Spirits, they're just going to start attacking away at this melee barracks. Weaver is exercising a little bit of caution. Will be disrupted up here. Oh, don't think they're really going to be able to do much, but it will force Seam of the Slayer back for a little bit longer. Yeah, those illusions are actually going to start hurting quite a bit. As the more farm that Weaver gets, the more uh, those become useful. Ethereal Blade on the Luna. Just focusing on the magic damage coming out from Eclipse, possibly. I don't know. What? It gives good stats. Well, another disruption going the way of the Weaver. Will be soul captured up. They have the Ravage. Not going to throw it out, however. And Steam of the Slayer, yet again, forced back. Mayla Barracks hasn't really taken a lot of significant damage. Only 500 down. But and it is getting chipped away. Every yeah. single time that they're being forced to rotate down through the top or bottom or middle to try and defend those towers, you know, more damage keeps going out in this middle of racks. Well, and it looks like Weaver is finally just going to commit to this blink and black hole only on the Luna, but that's pretty much all they need. Tide Hunter could cancel this on the back lines. BKB is forced out by the PA. Now here comes the Dream Quill. Going to catch out too. They haven't focused down anybody. Luna's dying very quickly. Still alive, however, eventually will die. And now Dust was thrown out in the middle of that fight. Shadow Demon is also going to fall. Tide Hunter going to be the next from the Invoker's spells. PA is going to die. And just so much damage all around. Now the Melee Barracks finally going to fall. Tide Hunter bought back, but he's already spent the Ravage, not really anything that that buyback does. Maybe they'll be able to defend the base for now, but it's looking pretty much over. Actually, the Weaver died? Not actually sure how that happened. He just took a whole bunch of damage. I don't think he got his time maps off. I know he did manage to get it off. There's just a whole bunch of a nuke coming out. That Luna Ultimate does a lot of damage. Obviously, it was all by the Rubik stealing it. Did you see how the Ethereal Blade was used in that last fight, or if it was? I didn't seem afraid, as we do see uh, down, Rubik, uh, Stazzle could be in a whole bunch of trouble right now. Although Pucky's is going to be able to get out of there. Roger just has no fear in the world. Going to throw back Mango Banana. Blink forward, gets the Fade Bolt, gets Kill in the Dazzle. Now the EMP. Ali Swall holding Mango Banana in place. It's going to drain the majority of his mana. Now Blink in from the Pucky. He's very low. They should be able to get Mango Banana. He's decently tanky, but they eventually will get that. Another spell has been stolen. Just going to be the Shadow Poison Puck. His phase shifting. He's fairly low. Might fall. I don't know. Gem on the deck. And Shadow Demon forced back into the base. Next set of barracks are going to fall in the favor of Cleve. They have disrupted up uh, Lolik, but he will be able to force staff back out to safety. Cleve will probably be forced back for a little bit longer. But they've got two range of racks, and all they need to start doing now is just simply being annoying and slowly chip away at this middle of racks. And the fact that these top and the bottom lanes are going to be pushing out on their own, it means that there's nothing the House of Gamers can do without basically winning a one versus uh, winning a five man team fight and not taking any kills themselves. Yeah, but now the Weaver's back in. We have a Tornado on the bottom lane. Deafening Blast Meteor combo will be avoided mostly by the PA. Shadow Demon going to disrupt himself, trying to stay alive. I think he's going to live, and in fact, he will. And, well, Lola going to back off for now. And, well, we have a Sun Strike on the back lines. Nicely done by the Invoker, going to get a nice kill on the Shadow Demon. Very nice map presence there, realizing that Shadow Demon's low enough to take down. And, well, that's going to be another kill. At this point, it doesn't really matter for Cleave, but every single time, it means it's a little bit hard to keep these lanes pushed back, and we're seeing that Cleave, they're ready to go again. In the middle lane, Puck's going to phase shift. Luna's pretty much out here alone. We're going to have another disconnect from the Phantom Assassin. Tide Hunter's going to pause for him, however. Uh, so, looks like PA will be safe. Oh no, Luna's way aggressively positioned. Weaver's there, and they should be able to get this kill. I think Luna's dead. Yeah, Luna is in so much trouble. She doesn't have the BKB, meaning that that Enigma stun is going to do so much to her. Just stopping her while the rest of uh, the team come in. The Weaver, with his uh, Chrysalis, with his Butterfly, with his Monkey King bar. Surprisingly, he's not actually the highest farmer in the game. That Midas on the Luna really doing work, but we're not quite into that stage yet of where Luna's the best carry of the game. We're almost there. Needs a few more items and a few more, uh, you know, big damage items, but at the same time, Honestly, the bigger problem for them is that everybody on the side of Cleave is above the other four members of HOG and Maglev Gangtrang. Looks like he's going to die. Dream Quill hasn't been committed just yet, and he's trying to make his way out. There goes the Dream Quill. He's going to Manta. Try to turn this, but Maglev Gangtrang falling so quickly and eventually will die. To that level one dig, and not quite maximum kill stealing yet, but... Yeah, unfortunately, oh. that positioning was way too aggressive for the Luna to take, and it was pretty abundantly obvious during that pause that he was going to die, but... Well, HOG still haven't GG'd out just yet. She does have a buyback. That is important. She didn't pop her ultimate. I... So she does have the possibility to save this. We just need her to come back and 
In the meantime, it's worth noting, Phantom Assassin doesn't really have anything at all. Pretty much on the back lines, Invoker is going in very deep. Actually, oh my goodness, the camera, I've completely lost control. All right, there we go. We have a disruption on the back lines. Black Hole is going to catch out. Only Key, however, are they even going to be able to focus down with the box? Sure will. And now the Phantom Assassin going to get some lucky crits. Enigma is going to fall, but in the meantime, Tier 3 Tower is going to die as well. Weaver, well, with the Ethereal Blade, they're doing decent damage to the puck. Now, Blink from the Phantom Assassin going to get another couple of lucky crits to get the Invoker. And now, Lose and Beam thrown out. They're going to lose a gem as well as the puck. Buyback from the Invoker trying to get back into this fight. Not sure what he's really going to be able to do in a nice hold for HOG. It's worth noting losing that gem is actually pretty big considering there's a lot of invis heroes on the side of um, Cleave. Don't think it matters right now as we see Invoker is going to be in so much trouble. He's trying to get out there, the Ravage has been popped. Time lapse thrown out by the Weaver. He's going to survive for now. Roger going to use that Ghost after trying to delay the damage coming up from the Phantom Assassin. It looks like he's going to survive, possibly, but now he's caught between four heroes. Just going to give his life to make sure that the Weaver survives on the back lines, and that's four heroes dead on the side of Cleave. I don't really think this is the start of comeback for HOG. They need a couple more engagements like that, but, well. The problem you have, though, right now is that every single time they go do that, I see at this point, Cleave, they could just ignore heroes. They could just go forward and just right-click down these racks and just slowly chip it away and win the game that way. Oh, we, are, we are at the point right now where Luna is a bit dangerous, can do a lot of damage. Even the PA... You know, she has got a basher. Not quite as fond as the other heroes in, this, in the game, but at the same time, can still get those lucky RNG crits. But at this Dyer's point, they can just simply, now. you know, bash away at these racks with their skulls. Yeah, Maglev Gang Train. I don't know. This is a very risky move coming up for HOG. They're going to disrupt him and start chipping away. But if Maglev Gang Train dies, it's pretty much over. They're just going for the YOLO push down mid. Maybe they'll be able to do it. No black hole for another 75 seconds. And well, tier 3 tower, down to about a third health. And at this point, this is what they need to do. They need to get something while this invoker's down. Just anything to work. As it doesn't like this uh, Luna's going for even more damage. Yeah, pretty much at this point, Divine Rapier is not out of the question for Maglev Gang Train if he's able to find that farm. Personally, I would not be against the Divine Rapier. It's one of the few times in which if you're behind, Divine Rapiers are a good item. Oh, Blink forward, they're going to drop the Dream Coil as well as the lift onto Luna. She's disrupted up defensively though, and it looks like she'll survive for now at least. Maglev Gang Train do about half, but look at that puck just explode. Now the illusions are working onto the Enigma. He will be able to back off on the back, or towards the uh, other side of the fight, but here comes the Siege again from HOG. They probably should back off. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Rubik might be looking for more. Has the Blink Dagger coming off a cooldown, but they're going to be able to lose, or get the kill on the Weaver. I didn't I see just... actually what he was trying to do. Looks like he just went for a wraparound and died so Radiant quickly to the Luna. He got the... Did... Yeah, he did get the time lapse off. Uh, he did get the PA, but he took himself a buyback. At the same meantime, though, we do see that uh, Luna, what is she going to turn that to Demon's Edge into? I don't know. I think it's rapier time. If you die one more time anyway, it's over for HOG. I think Radiant it's time. Tower could use a hand. And, and yes, it is. Divine Rapier. The fun has officially entered the game. Yeah, Ben Weaver is going to buy back. This is going to be a huge fight, and those glaives are going to hurt on the back lines. We do have a Ghostwalk coming up from the Invoker. He's going to be able to uh, make himself safe. It looks like we're going to have a fairly spread out engagement here. Well, Blink and Black Hole going to catch out three, only two actually. And now Deafening Blast going to follow up. Maglev Gang Train's falling fairly quickly to Ravage. Going to catch out a lot, and look at those glaives start doing damage. And now Weaver, he's going to eat a lot of the Eclipse with the Soul and Ravage coming out from the Rubik, and they're going to lose their Rapier as well as their Luna. Divine Rapier just casually sitting on the ground. Weaver probably wants to pick that one up. Um, Guys, Spring Gem on the ground. Buybacks from the Tidehunter as well as the Shadow Demon. But no buyback on the Luna for quite some time, and that's pretty much it. Why haven't they picked up the Rapier? Yeah, I, I really don't know. Weaver has an empty slot for it, even. Surely, they, did they spot it? Did they know that he had a Divine Rapier? I'm not quite sure. But either way, Luna is down for another 82 seconds. Her buyback time is even longer than that, meaning that... The one carry that they had in the Cleave side, uh, the House of Gamer side that was doing so much work, they just don't have the ability to uh, stop this push anymore. And this is going to be the last rack. That last melee rack being harassed down by the Weaver. The Glyph being popped out as a blasted effort. And, well, if the push was already big, well, with Mega Creeps, it's even bigger. Yeah, but they could probably just go for throwing T4s. They're not looking too healthy. and. 
Well, Weaver, if he had the uh, Rapier, they'd fall even quicker, but I don't think it's going to matter. We have a Blink back from the Tide Charger. Doesn't have any ultimate. I have a BKB popped on the back lines. Trying to go for this Rubik, but with the Ghost Scepter, PA is not going to be able to do anything. Result here for us. Now the Scythe Device going the way of the PA. Now blinking. Black Hole, well, a little bit disjointed by that Tornado, but they should be able to clean up all of these kills, and they will. Phantom Assassin going to be the last fall. GG called out by Maglev Game Train, and now in the base, they're going to lose key as well. Phantom Assassin was actually surviving on the back lines for quite some time, I believe, with a Grave, but in the end... We just saw an Ingma there chilling out in the enemy bases. That is going to be the first win coming out for uh, Cleave right there, taking out House of Gamers in a very nice team fight orientated lineup. Yeah, very well. I was hoping for that Divine Rapier to work out for HOG, but in the end, they only had farm on the Luna and it just didn't work out for them. Uh, thank you for watching. I've been Grand SV and he's been Banshee. You can follow us at this Twitch channel as well as twitch.tv slash headfulatv1 as well as... Uh, Twitch.tv slash Heflamoke. You can find my personal Twitch channel at GrandisV as well as on Twitter at GrandisV. Uh, so, where can they find you, Banshee? Well, I'm known as Banshee in practically every single uh, social media network and Twitch TV channels, but obviously, definitely be sure to follow Hefla TV. And if you want to support us, there is a subscri subscribe function with the new uh, e commotions that are going to be coming out very, very soon.